Welcome to the IIFX podcast series. We have a special guest today, uh, a good member of our consortium, uh, Jake Shield, who is the CEO of uh, Landsky AI. Uh, Jake, welcome this morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me on. I'm pretty excited to uh, talk with you today. Yeah, you know, tell the people uh, about Landsky, specifically how it came about and why. Yeah, so I originally um, security integration background. I actually um, grew up in the security world. So come from a family business originally, um, still around actually in the uh, tri-state area. But, um, you know, that meant when I was 10 years old, I was hearing about uh, card readers and turnstiles and whatnot. And at the time, I didn't like hearing about that, but um, grew to appreciate it. Really like um, security technology, um, you know, high school, uh, college, um, winters, summers, was doing install related work, then IT related work, and then getting more involved with emerging technology and um, strategy around that. And while I still on the integration side was when I ran into um, what we call a drone in a box company for the first time. So for now, um, just could think of it like there's an automated drone system, uh, you know, whole concept around doing some automated patrolling. And we were very excited about it. Um, Thought it was the next big thing. It was, you know, so simple. It's gonna, you know, do all these different forms of activities that maybe you were having traditional guarding do or work with them when they go it. So quickly got demos set up, um, got clients out there to look at it. And they thought it was awesome technology, but there's quickly a um, bunch of hurdles that were stopping the adoption of technology. Um, a lot of it was related to human input, um, who's gonna control the system, uh, needing to be certified, not wanting to get their staff certified or, you know, getting these different licenses or waivers to operate the technology. Um, at the time, a lot of it was just moving cameras. There wasn't much data besides the actual video itself that was being leveraged. Um, a lot of it was high upfront costs, not being sure if you're keeping up with the latest and greatest. And there's this list of hurdles that was stopping the adoption of technology. And that's actually what led to the idea of uh, Land Sky was, we looked at the, I was looking at it with, you know, how, how can we actually make it so that it's simple to adopt uh, drones and robotics for security? So that's actually where the idea of the company is from. Our whole purpose is to make the adoption of robotics simple. And we look at it as how can we actually have that true virtual guarding program and even make sure that whether it's event security to actual, um, say, campus-wide security, have something that's a seamless adoption process and a completely turnkey service, essentially, that could make it super simple for end users to adopt this technology. Yeah, that's good. You know, from the venue standpoint, I'm running a, uh, uh, you know, I got a baseball venue, uh, I got an arena, I got a horse track environment I'm involved in a golf course. Why should, why should I even think of adopting new security technology, Jake? Yeah, so I think, um, it's kind of like any other industry where everything is becoming much more dynamic and requires a more dynamic response where before it was even, you know, crazy to think of the idea of, you know, how Evolve and these other companies are popular. You know, that was a weird concept years ago. We didn't think we even needed a long time ago metal detectors anywhere. But now it's getting to a stage where threats are changing. Um, you have one side now where I think we're very lucky that drones have, you know, there's a lot of people that could use drones for bad. And at most really what they've done is just, you know, we've seen the football games or other events where, you know, there's a commercial break because they have to pause play because a drone is in the area. But really nothing bad has happened from it for the most part besides, you know, just getting those recordings. But I saw recently and um, actually I'll try to link them in. I got to look them up, uh, find them again for actually – there was some of the first cases where they're catching people planning to do something uh, malicious with uh, these, you know, consumer easy to use drones. So on one side, you have it where a lot of these threats are changing, but then a lot of it even is down to crowd behavior and being able to, you know, a lot of any criminal activity is just becoming smarter or anyone looking to do anything malicious is very innovative these days. They understand, okay, we need a, whether it's sneaking things in or, just trying to get in with the crowd to then cause chaos. Um, having something up in the air, whether it's a drone or, you know, different video analytics on cameras, just to give you some of these different insights, um, understand, you know, if 
there's mass crowding going on or if someone's starting some sort of issue or medical emergency. So it's just so dynamic with where the threats are coming from now, where we find it even more important to have dynamic technology to match that. You certainly are correct there. You know, one of the things that caught my attention with uh, Landsky is the crowd intelligence solution that you, you bring forward to the industry. And then uh, why does your team use tethered uh, drones as opposed to other options? Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll start actually on the tethered drone side. So just to explain that technology a bit, um, I know we're used to flying around, whether it's uh, we've had family member ourselves, you know, flying around a drone, we have the remote control going, you know, all different uh, locations, you're getting the video back on your phone screen or on the controller and, you know, just flying it around. The difference with the tethered drone is that it's actually connected with essentially it's like a little box or battery box that's on the ground or on a vehicle that the drone essentially is taking off from and it's actually connected the whole time it's in flight to this box on the ground. So it's essentially feeding power the entire time the drone is up in the air and also data is coming back down through that cable. But the important part to remember is it's connected by cable to this box and it's getting constant power. So now you have a system it could technically go beyond 24 hours in the air. I mean, typically you're just keeping it up for in the entirety of an event or as much as you can for an event. But the idea is, you know, you get this drone, tether drone, you're not flying it around like a normal drone anymore, but you don't have to because you get this thing 150, um, 200 feet in the air. It hovers there. You can bring it and drive it to different locations, but it just hovers there. And it's like a constant eye in the sky throughout the event. Um, these tether drones have very advanced payloads. So I mean by that is different camera sensors that could, you know, have incredible optical and digital zoom that is on the system, uh, thermal sensors for actually being able to, you know, see what's going on at night, maybe through some uh, different types of dynamic environments. And really what we're looking at with that crowd intelligence package and how that fits in is we use those tether drones, but, you know, you still need to have certified operators that could get the system set up quickly, um, survey the site and ensure they're ready to operate, um, getting that constant communication and um, management with the uh, security operations team that's on site. Um, we do have an aspect where we're able to do um, bring in uh, crowd managers as well that are, you know, certified former army um, personnel, high ranking that come in and are actually able to sit in the SOC or security operations center with the uh, end user, kind of look out, talk with our pilots while they're up in the air. And then even video analytic data, we bundle in there, making sure, you know, could just be, you know, how many people are at this one entrance right now. You could understand you need to start diverting people to a new entrance, um, seeing, you know, maybe how many spots are full or what traffic is looking like beyond the venue to being able to spot medical emergencies, direct personnel there. Um, there is an emergency. You could see everything that is happening in that environment. And it's a very safe system to use as well. Very simple. But um, really the idea around it is how we could help events get. It's really a turnkey package. Just get in there. They don't need to worry about having all their staff licensed or, you know, they do have a pilot on, on the team, but he's out sick or on vacation during their one of their bigger events going on. And now, you know, they don't know what to do. We just come in do survey the site and bring all the um, equipment needed, bring the team needed and work with on-site security to just make sure they could put on a safe event. You know, our industry is very conservative. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the word challenges <laughs> the venues yeah. have in adopting uh, technology such as yours. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you help them overcome these hurdles? Because it is a good question because yeah. I think there's a fear out there uh when it comes to technology so you got a big challenge in front of you so tell me how uh you're going to overcome these hurdles that i'm talking about yeah yeah no so a lot of it is from that um turnkey idea on the package i was talking about so one thing and with our company every kind of solution we build out we're looking to because we know you say drones you say um drone detection or ai maybe and analytics it immediately sounds very complex or difficult to uh, get that implemented. So right away, that's why we focus on like as white glove service or package around it, where we're just like, Hey, you know, 
you know, we'll work it out. Just tell us, you know, what you're concerned about, you know, what you need to do, you know, what's budget, et cetera. But really, we don't want you to have to um, hire people or figure that we don't want it to be difficult. So our whole idea is one from that turnkey side is let's just make it super simple. Our team will just come in and work with yours. You don't need to necessarily get any new buy any new equipment, buy any new, um, you know, extra staff that comes on site. So that's one end of it of how we look to overcome those hurdles is just making it a, um, a turnkey solution that they don't need to, you know, figure that they don't need to learn everything about drones or uh, robotics or AI. Um, on the other side of that too, though, is a lot of it is education even. Um, again, you just hear drones, everything. It sounds super complex and like it's going to be difficult to get a part of a package. So a lot of it's around education too, um, helping them understand, you know, some of it is even helping like, look, these are some of the threats that are out there now, and this is what you could do about it. And also kind of educating on the, you know, how the return on investment looks and kind of the different advantages of this technology. So a lot of it we do focus on, you know, maybe right now you haven't had a, an incident at any of your events in a long time happen, but if it does, what are you going to do when that happens? Or do you, it, how valuable would it be to actually have this technology up in the air that can help you immediately know what's going on. So a lot of it is a focus on our package being turnkey. And then a lot of it is education because again, and I don't blame people, you hear about drones and everything and a drone program or something similar. Sounds like it's going to be something very complex to get going. So that's where we try to make sure that we're doing a lot of education as well. Okay. You know, what caught my attention also, you know, data is king, making decisions. We have to make decisions all the time and we need the, the proper data to make those decisions. So what types of action data, uh, actionable data can I get from being associated with you in my, in my event? Uh, and, and how might it improve my security design? Yeah. So um, I, I started to hit on a little bit before, actually, when I was talking about like, you know, seeing crowding and different entrances um, on a basic level, a lot of it is based around, you know, people and vehicles, you know, seeing that kind of congestion, where are the uh, main choke points? And then are, is one actually getting overcrowded right now? Can we redirect the flow of individuals? Is one lot getting overcrowded now? Um are there more, you know, are there just crowds forming outside the venue where they shouldn't be? Um, a lot of it is even being able to see, you know, maybe there is a, um, a more advanced functions could be, you know, and it's difficult from a drone point of view, but is possible from different tests, you know, different forms of object detection. Maybe you want to um, see if there was an object left behind anywhere or if there's just a uh, bag sitting outside the venue. Um, a lot of it, though, is uh, based around that people and vehicle um basic concept of just, you know, are the crowds starting to come together and they're supposed to be separated right now? Are people starting to get closer to the uh, stage? Are, um, is vehicle traffic more than it's expected to be? Or um, are there more vehicles than, you know, there should be for the actual people attending the event right there and monitoring different areas um, around there to see if there's any, you know, anything malicious that is actually occurring. So a lot of the data is around, I'd say, people, vehicle, basic object detection, but really just making sure that they have an idea of, you know, counting up the number of individuals and, you know, making sure there's not, you're not going uh, essentially over capacity for a lot of these events even. So just trying to make sure any, any data they want related to that, that we could uh, provide. This, this next question might be tough. Uh, mm -hmm. Hypothetically, uh, managing a golf tournament, Major yeah. golf tournament. I'm the uh, responsible for it, mm -hmm. and I really believe in a land sky AI. Mm -hmm. Now I have to go some up the stream to get approval, mm -hmm. <laughs> so the ROI becomes a factor. So mm -hmm. help, help me sell to my bosses cost saving benefits of being associated with Landsky AI versus not having you and what, and what are we going to gain from it? The fact that we're going to do it. Yes. Yeah, so on one uh, more simple level, and it's similar to other technology when you go to bring it out, there is just even that decreased um, liability. And if there wasn't a, an incident to happen because you couldn't 
get this eye in the sky to be looking out there, then you're already seeing a um, very large expense because, you know, the idea is you get out there, this thing could scan the perimeters, it could be looking throughout the entire event, instead of, you know, you might have it right now where you need to be working typically with local law enforcement, but they need to come in. If they do have drones, they might just need to be sending up, you know, new batteries, all different drones throughout the day. Or, you know, a lot of times there really is no drones that are coming on site for a lot of these events to help out. Then you have it where maybe, you know, an incident happens or something's going on and you don't have anything in the air to actually go and scan what's happening at this event. Um, There is the idea, though, of, you know, you don't need to necessarily have as many people patrolling the same perimeters at that point. So maybe even if they aren't looking to take away the you know, they're fine with the amount of staff or the cost is an issue for that. You could actually still actually bring trim that down or bring that down if you needed. But the idea is this could do the different patrols on site. It could come on, you know, go throughout the perimeter or it could just sit up there for the entire day throughout the event, maybe moving to different locations, but still able to zoom in, see all the different angles where it does decrease the need for a lot of these, um, different perimeter security checks, um, even some of the different, uh, you know, patrols that are going on throughout the uh, property throughout the day. So really it's a uh, human capital uh, expenditures that could be reduced probably. Yeah. Capabilities of the technology besides mm-hmm. collecting action, you know, getting the data, the crowd, crowd intelligence solutions. So I'm gaining a lot on this uh, mm-hmm. and, and maybe more consistency in my planning and operations yeah. of, of, of the uh, golf event. Uh, well, that's, just, that's just one example. But uh, mm-hmm. now, uh, what's the easiest way for listeners to get in touch with you? Yeah, so we always um, run our website either way. You know, if you want to do contact form, uh, my email, which I'm sure we could attach when this goes out, is just jake at me. You see our email at, or our website is actually in the background here, but it's just jake at landsky period AI. Um, usually easiest way to get in touch with us is just through email like that contact form on our website. Um, we also have, you know, generic email info at landsky.ai, but, um, just reach out via email, no issues, um, for us getting back in touch quick and, uh, quick and simple. Well, you know, Jake, I want to thank you personally for advancing technology in our profession here. Uh, and, and as hopefully as we get into the adoption phase now that many of our venues uh, will uh, utilize the capabilities that you bring forward uh, today. It's been enjoyable talking to you this morning. And, and Jake, thanks uh, very much for everything. Yeah, no, thank you, Lou. And it's um, awesome for me to talk to someone who's, you know, really been a visionary and leader in the space. So I, I appreciate the time. Thanks.